Well, in this case, we didn't start the fire. Some of you want to blame us for doing that, but that is uh, not what happened. Welcome in. Good morning. Happy Wednesday as we uh, hit hump day on KCMO Talk Radio 95.7 FM. So uh, we brought this to your attention Sunday nights on my uh, Facebook and Twitter page. And many of you complained that I was talking about it. Because how dare I talk about it? Because I'm making this a story. Well, by last night, it was on Fox News, on Jesse Waters' show. So, as uh, far as I'm concerned, you got it from us first. It was always going to go national. You got it from us first, which is good. I want that to be the case. I don't want to just follow the leader. I don't want to wait for it to be on Fox News to talk about it. Uh, we beat him to it. Now, it's a local story, so that's part of the reason we beat him to it. But uh, I knew it was going to blow up because it was blowing up when I was talking about it on social media. So there was this kid at the game on Sunday, the uh, Chiefs Raiders game, and he was in headdress. And then he also had his face painted half black and half red. And the CBS folks who were broadcasting the game showed him at the start of the fourth quarter from the right side of his face, which was black. So it looks like he's got his face painted black and he's got a Native American headdress on. And immediately people start saying, oh, this kid's doing blackface and he's got a headdress on and what a racist and everything else. And it was nonsense. The other half of his face was painted red. Now, you know, whether or not he should be doing that, I made the case and a lot of you didn't like it. And that's fine. I'm not changing my opinion. And I'll explain why in a second. I said it doesn't make sense for the parents to allow this kid to go to the game like that because he's a sitting duck. The media will find him. They will show him on TV. And then, you know, crazy media and social media will try to destroy this kid. And that's what's happening. Now, that doesn't mean that he shouldn't be allowed to do it. He's allowed to do whatever he wants. And yes, the media who is trying to destroy this kid's life are a bunch of hacks and losers. And if this kid wants to sue Deadspin, the company that wrote the article about him in blackface, if he wants to sue them or his family wants to sue them into oblivion, I'm not going to be upset by that one bit. I don't know how much money Deadspin has lying around. Uh, They're a shell of what they used to be. But all right, cool. I'm all about that. Now, it also turns out the kid has Native American uh, blood in him. His father's got some uh, Native American ties, is what it's turned out. And many of you were sending me DMs and hit me up on social media, and that's cool. I'm, you know, I can take it. I'm, I'm good with that. I like conversing with you guys, whether it's on the phones, the text line, even when some of you are being very, very rude, which has been a little too much, calling me every name under the sun. But can we just converse here like adults? Can we not act like little kids for five minutes? But uh, anyway, uh, some of you said this proves your point, and this means I'm wrong in saying the kid should not have had the headdress on. No, it doesn't. Think about, just step back for a second, think about this. If you're making the point that the kid should be allowed to wear a headdress because he has Native American ancestry, then you are admitting if he did not have Native American ancestry, he would not be allowed to wear the headdress. I don't really care who wears a headdress. Let's be very clear. The Chiefs don't allow it anymore at Arrowhead. That happened in 2020 when the world went crazy. I think anyone should be allowed to wear it to support their team. I don't think it's cultural appropriation. I think it's honoring a team. I think it's supporting a team. But in today's climate, this is not bowing down to anybody, but in today's climate, Are you going to put your kid in a position or allow your kid to put himself in a position where he goes viral and his face is plastered all over the news over something like this? This has always been about protecting kids, not about what you're allowed to wear, not about whether or not you should kowtow to crazy woke lefties who don't want you to wear headdresses but are okay with you walking into a girl's bathroom if you're a boy. That's not what this is about. This is about whether or not 
we should enter our kids into the cultural wars. And I don't feel like we should be doing that. Whether it's about, you know, uh, bathroom stuff at schools, whether it's about chiefs headdress nonsense on TV, I want to keep my kids out of it. Now, if an adult decided he was going to go to the Vegas game last weekend and he was going to wear a headdress and he was going to paint his face, I'd say, you know what? You go do that. If they want to call you out, you stand up for yourself. I love it. Here, here to you. And you stand up to anybody who tries to destroy your life. I would support that person in a heartbeat. But with kids, knowing that TV might find that person and plaster them all over the screen to millions of people watching football, and then social media might take it, and then crazy websites might run with it and call you a racist as a 10-year-old child, I'm not putting my kid through that. It's not about whether or not the kid's Native American. That's irrelevant to the point I was making. So for those of you that want to say to me, well, the kid's apparently got Native American blood in him. Therefore, you've got it all wrong. No, because it wasn't about that. It wasn't about whether or not the kid should be allowed to wear a headdress. It was about are you protecting your child as much as possible from the insane world that we live in right now? Are you doing that as a parent? Two things can be true at the same time here. CBS did something it shouldn't have done, showing the kid from only the right side of his face so it looked like he had blackface on. Of course, social media went nuts, and websites like Deadspin are garbage, and if they get sued into oblivion, I won't cry a single ounce of tears for them. That is all true and can be true. While also saying, I don't believe the parents put this kid in a fair spot because he was a sitting duck. And part of the reason he was a sitting duck is because you don't see those headdresses at Chiefs games anymore. So if you're one of the camera guys for CBS and you got the kid dressed up like that, well, you're going to be like, whoa, let's get that on TV because you can't get that at Arrowhead anymore. And that's something when Jesse Waters was talking about this last night on Fox News. Jesse got it wrong. He's like, oh, Chiefs fans wear this stuff all the time. What's the big deal? No, they don't. And that's part of why I believe CBS showed it. Because you can't see this stuff at Chiefs games anymore. You can't get those headdresses into the stadium. Which is why this kid was also going to be caught by the TV cameras. Because it's not like in a couple of weeks when the Chiefs are playing the Bills, you know, this is going to be out at Arrowhead and you're going to see a bunch of headdresses. You're not going to. So when you see it at a road game, it's like, whoa, look at that kid. Let's get that on TV. So Jesse Waters was wrong when he was talking like that. He was like, oh, this stuff happens. all." No, it doesn't. And that's why. That's exactly why. This was a situation that was bound to end up exactly as it did. 913-408-7957. As we roll through the morning on KCMO, let's say hi to Kevin. He's in Overland Park. Kevin, kick it off, my man. What's up? Hey, Pete, I was just going to say, I, I do agree with you as far as the the kid being a a potential sitting duck to the media, which obviously he became a sitting duck. Um, and I'm all for the family doing a Sandman on Deadspin. I mean, it's time to, instead of Bud Light, I'm going to Sandman them and just sue them to the nth degree for what they did, mm-hmm. what for Aaron Phillips did. And so, because at the end of the day, you know, Ireland's doing the same, you know, having to deal with the same thing. We, It is free speech. That child is allowed to do that. Yeah. You know, he's supporting his team that he's a fan of. You know, that's there's nothing wrong with what he did. They tried to make it wrong, and it's time to push back with some teeth on this stuff. So it is it is free speech. He is allowed to do that. He is. And you I know. never said I never said he wasn't. But, you know, I, I would oh, I have I I loved to have seen, like, his father, who apparently is the Native American, what if he dressed yeah. up with his son? What if he stood there in solidarity with his kid? That would have been cool, too. I would have been all for that. I, you know? See, it, that's, that's if there's anything, and good stuff, Kevin, if there's anything that I look at this story and say to myself, how could this have gone better for the kid? If you're going to put your kid in that spot, knowing he's a sitting duck, at least stand there with him, especially when the father is the full-blooded Native American. 
913-408-7957. Let's uh, get to more of you. we got Andrew Bailey uh, at the bottom of the hour, the Missouri Attorney General on KCMO Talk Radio 95.7. But this weekend, a young fan went to a Chiefs Raiders game in Vegas with face paint and a headdress. And the media tried to destroy his life. Now, I know you're looking at this. You're like, what's the big deal? It's Thanksgiving weekend. He's got a headdress on. I mean, should he have worn a pilgrim hat instead? Of course not. He's a Chiefs fan. He loves the Chiefs. He doesn't hate anyone. But the media only showed this picture from the side, the side with the black face paint. The media published his profile to make the young boy look like a racist, like a young boy decided to wear blackface in Vegas in front of 60,000 fans at a nationally televised game. That was Jesse Waters on Fox News last night. As uh, this story, as we told you about on Monday, some of you are like, why are you talking about this? This isn't a story. No, I knew it was going to become a national story. It did. Fox News was on it last night, and we had it for you first on, frankly, Sunday night on social media, and then Monday morning as well. And, uh, you know, the point I've made for the last couple of days, it doesn't change. It's... um, This kid's getting railroaded unfairly for a multitude of reasons. But at the same time, as parents, it's our job to protect our kids from the media, taking advantage of them and using them as pawns in their political culture wars. And that's where I still think there was a major mistake, whether or not the kid's got the native background or not. I'm not setting my kid up to be put in that situation, knowing full well CBS would love nothing more than to show that kid on TV and then... Social media is going to destroy him. Paul, what's happening, my man? Hey, Pete. Yeah, uh, one thing uh, Jesse was talking about, he was talking more emphasis on the face paint. He showed examples of Steeler fans in the face paint, so the hypocrisy is there. But my second point is, for example, you take your 12-year-old to a pro-Israeli uh, protest down at the plaza, and the Kansas City Star snaps a picture and says, hey, this young man uh, supports genocide of Palestine." You can't put your kids in bubble wrap. Another example, you take your family to Mount Rushmore. They snap a picture and they say, hey, look, this family supports racist presidents. You can't do that. You can't kowtow to these people. you got to stand up to your convictions. You want to take your child to a protest, Mount Rushmore, take him to a game, let him dress up. Do it. Stand your ground, just like the guy, the Covington young man. But you can't put him in bubble wrap. These, these far-left extremists aren't going to stop. So that's just my point. Well, here, let me let me ask you this, Paul. I mean, the Covington Catholic okay. kid, he's, he's 16, 17 years old. He's basically an adult, right? Right. And this kid is 10-ish. He might even be younger. I, to me, there's nuance to this, where if you're 10 years old and you don't know any better and you don't know the way of the world, I, I, that's where this, to me, is different than Nicholas Sandman. Right. But by example, at the plaza, if you take your child down to the protest and say, hey, I'm, we're going to support these people. I believe in this and I want you to follow me. I want to I want you to I want to be your mentor. I'm your father. This is how I'm going to lead by example. And the Kansas City Star staffs that picture and says, look, this kid supports genocide. You, they're not going to stop, Pete. They're, mm-hmm. they're not going to stop. Mount Rushmore, you take your family there. Oh, look at this. This guy's taking his kids to show these extremist colonization presidents. They won't stop. Mm. So you've got to lead your children. You've got to show them and say, okay, son, they snapped a picture of you at this game. We had a great time. We spent time together. I'm your father. We're going to stand up. You did nothing wrong, son. And that father's going to take care of that child. I guarantee you that. Well, I, I thank you very much there, Paul. I, I just, you. you know, I appreciate it. I just still think there was a, uh, a bit of a disservice there out of the gates, knowing full well that this could have happened. Uh, on the Facebook page, Uh, Jennifer writes, what are we supposed to do? Lay down and cave, check ourselves before we walk out of the door on anything anyone may attack us on? Well, he's not white. He has a right to dress like this. And his parents did nothing wrong. And you shamed his parents in your Facebook post. That is from Jennifer on Facebook. Well, you can't have it both ways. I'm sitting here and saying in a perfect world, in a free world, I could wear a headdress to a game. I'm not Native American. You can't use the fact that this kid has Native American blood and say that that makes it right while then also saying anybody should be allowed to wear a headdress. Which one is it? If you're going to point out the fact that the kid has Native American blood as a reason for why he should be allowed to wear the headdress, then you're implying that if I don't have Native American blood, I can't wear the headdress. I don't think the kid being Native American has anything to do with it. 
because anyone should be allowed to wear a headdress to support their team. Of course, the Chiefs don't allow that anymore, but that's the broader point here. I got a, a, a minute, Mark, but I want to fit you in an independent, so uh, let it rip, my man. All right, buddy, real quick. The media can spread more trash than a possum. <laughs> Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. That's well Thank done. You. Thank you very much for that, Mark. That's true, too. Like, there's a lot of things true here. I know some of you guys want to be upset with me over it, but I'm agreeing with what Mark is saying right there. Exactly right. And that's what I'm protecting my children from at a young age. It's not putting them in bubble wrap. It's just knowing knowing how the world is and protecting them from the chaos as best I can.